The Spider-Man universe will connect to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can, which up until this point sadly did not include bringing characters like Venom, Morbius, and Kraven the Hunter into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, despite those characters getting their very own Marvel movies from Sony. Peter Parker may have palled around with the Avengers, turned to dust before our very eyes, and introduced us to the internationally renowned crime fighter better known as the Night Monkey, but up until now, Spider-Man was the only character that seemingly had a foot in both the Disney Marvel Universe and the Sony Marvel Universe, even if that foot has never really appeared in the Sony Marvel Universe. And while this has been the subject of endless debate and legal scholarship pertaining to who owns what rights to use which characters, currently there are in fact two cinematic universes. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, owned by Disney or the MCU, and the Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel Characters, or the Spumsy. And much like Thanos, the inevitable is happening. Talk of these two universes merging, or at the very least connecting via a couple of very strong strands of Jared Leto's hair, is actually heating up. As reported by Variety, there is in fact a plan to cross the proverbial streams, or get caught in each other's webs or whatever. Sony Motion Pictures Group President Sanford Panich at first demurred by saying, we don't really think of our 900 characters as the Spideyverse. We have a Marvel Universe. The volume of characters we have you know, wait until you see this next Venom. You don't miss Spider-Man. It'll be exciting if they do meet, right? <laughs> yes, it'll be exciting. Panage followed that up with something a little more to the point by saying, there actually is a plan. I think now maybe it's getting a little more clear for people where we're headed, and I think when No Way Home comes out, even more will be revealed. You know what that means. Pizza time. No. Not, not pizza time. I'm talking about the multiverse. Multiverse time. I'm sorry, you're saying there's a multiverse? Panich is of course referring to the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, which is set to hit theaters on December 17th, 2021, and looks like it will fully embrace the multiversal mayhem coming our way that was first teased in Spider-Man Far From Home and actualized by WandaVision. As we know, WandaVision is directly leading into the events of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, alluding to the fact that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going all in on parallel realities, alternate timelines, and presumably familiar yet different versions of the same character. Now, the third Tom Holland starring Spider-Man film has been the subject of rampant internet speculation ever since the shocking final moments of Spider-Man Far From Home, in which Peter Parker's secret identity is exposed to the entire world by Mysterio on J. Jonah Jameson's talk radio show. Spider-Man's name is Peter Parker. As it turns out, J.K. Simmons reprising his role as J. Jonah Jameson wasn't the only connection to previous Sony Spider-Man films. Jamie Foxx and Alfred Molina are returning as Electro from Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man 2, respectively, and the rumor mill has been working overtime. There's reports of everyone from Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield returning as the Peter's Parker of yesteryear, to Willem Dafoe appearing as the true big bad of the film, Norman Osborn, who I'm told is something of a scientist himself. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Although Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone have been feverishly denying rumors that their characters will appear in No Way Home, the film's biggest surprises are seemingly trickling out at a rate only rivaled by Thor Love and Thunder, whose biggest cameos are being spoiled one grainy paparazzi photo at a time. But back to the matter at hand. It does indeed sound like the Spider-Verse is in our future, even if there is a big question mark about Tom Holland's future with the franchise itself. Because back in February, Tom Holland told Collider that Spider-Man No Way Home is the last Spider-Man film for which he is contractually obligated. Spider-Man No Way Home would be my last one under contract, so I've always said to them, if they want me back, I'll be there in a heartbeat. I've loved every minute of being a part of this amazing world. It's changed my life for the better. I'm so lucky to be here. If they want me back, I'll be there. If they don't, I will walk off into the sunset a very, very happy person because it's been an amazing journey. Now, as we've seen with other major MCU actors like Robert Downey Jr., contracts can absolutely be renegotiated, and I would be genuinely shocked if this was Tom Holland's final appearance as Peter Parker. Now, regardless, the wheels of change are already in motion. Eagle-eyed fans have already spotted some of the clues about how these universes will combine in the Morbius trailer of all places, which featured a surprise cameo by Michael Keaton as Adrian Toomes, aka The Vulture. Now, Tombs had previously appeared in Spider-Man Homecoming, which is very firmly planted in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, whereas Morbius is 100% spumsy through and through. Now, if you want to know more about this in particular, we have an episode of Nerdist News to show you, which I will link to in the description below, but I digress. 
Whatever happens in Spider-Man No Way Home and with the MCU's multiverse is clearly going to create a narrative bridge to explain how and why these characters from these two seemingly disparate film universes will suddenly be able to interact with each other, talk to each other, all of that without creating an entertainment law singularity. And honestly, I will say, if all of this doesn't lead to Wanda Maximoff doing a double take after seeing Kraven the Hunter is going to be played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, aka the MCU's original Quicksilver, then what's the point of any of this, huh? She recast Pietro? Now with all of that said, between Venom Let There Be Carnage, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2, the Untitled Female Spider-Verse spin-off, Kraven the Hunter, Morbius, Silk, Jackpot, Black Hat, and Silver Sable, Uncle Ben dead and loving it, and maybe even a Sinister Six project on the way, the Spumsy is only missing one thing, a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And much like Bonesaw, I am ready for these connective webs to unify all of these projects like two halves of a single boat. Folks, in the meantime, we will use our great power to live up to the great responsibility of keeping you up to date on all things Spider-Man over on Nerdist.com. But for now, tell us, what do you think of this news? How do you think they will unite these two disparate cinematic universes? And which Spumsy project are you most excited for and why? Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.